Let's talk to Arena. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, I have a guest. This is Arena, and I'm so excited to talk to her today. Um, before I have her introduce herself, though, I want to go ahead and say that I'm drinking H2O because it is very late in my day, and so I do not have tea out. I do not have coffee out. I just have water. Okay, with that said, Arena, do you want to introduce yourself in any way to the internet? How would you like to? How would you like <laughs> them to know you? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name's Arena. Um, today, I am drinking some apple cinnamon tea. So yes, tea time with Brittany Simon. Um, I'm a relatively new or kind of dipping my toes into content creation. Um, and I just really like discussing um, ideas, yes. philosophies, um, especially like discussing um, all those things and how they relate to um, how we socialize and our relationships. Wonderful. Okay, I'm so excited to get into it. Do you want to go ahead and direct us in the conversation about what we're talking about today? Sure. So um, we decided that we wanted to talk about the concept of beauty. And I think the first order of business would be to define it because I think you and I kind of define beauty a little differently. <laughs> yeah, that's so hard. Well, why don't you go first since you're the guest? Mm -hmm. Sure. So for me personally, um, I have this term that I uh, use, the beep bop beauty. Um, so if any of your viewers know the channel Coves, I really like that channel. Um, I think I remember you reviewed it and found it a little boring. The guy with the accent, He's very right? clinical. The, like, slow mm -hmm, talker. The British yeah. guy. Yeah, I, I really like his, his videos. And so he explores what I consider to be beep bop beauty. Um, to further my definition, or I didn't even define it, I just said beep bop beauty. So to, to define it, um, it is what your mama gave you. So outside mm -hmm. of styling, outside mm -hmm. of makeup, outside of cosmetic procedures, outside of piercings, tattoos, just literally um, your facial development and symmetry. That's what I personally define beauty as. Um, and therefore, for me, it doesn't hold um, as much value as I think people tend to put on the concept of beauty. Mm. Um, everything else I call effort, right? Effort, mm. um, displays of wealth, um, hygiene. So, you know, there could be different standards of hygiene, like, you know, shaving for women uh, could, it increases our sexual dimorphism, right? It, because if women have less hair than men, then if women had even no hair, yeah. Yeah. compared to men that would you know increase the sexual dimorphism which is generally attractive you know um displays of wealth like in uh, times or in places where food is maybe a little bit harder to come by having a being a little bit chunkier might be a display yeah. of wealth which is attractive and in places where the food is literally trying to kill you like in the u.s yes. <laughs> yes. being uh, fit and slimmer is considered to be attractive so true, for those true. things I, I i don't view those as like inherent beauty necessarily i really like that distinction difference between the two things because i do think like i think most humans are basically like average in my brain but then mm -hmm. that effort adds to those beauty points right um beauty is such a weird idea to me because i do think of Oh, my brain wants to say, like, what's the difference from, like, sexiness and beauty? Because to me, they're different. Mm, yes. And I do associate, which is probably bubble culture-wise, I do associate beauty with wholesomeness and sexiness with being more, like, obscene, maybe? Like, more mm. in the form, like, more in the set, like, what makes you turned on versus what makes you, like, <gasps> But then, you mm -hmm. know, have you ever heard someone say like, oh, that's a beautiful child? There was a documentary. Yeah. I haven't watched it, but I really want to about a boy who was like the most beautiful mm -hmm. boy in the world. Oh, yep. The Swedish guy from Midsommar. Yeah. He was the old guy. This yeah. One? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I must, I, I haven't seen it yet, but I was thinking to myself, mm -hmm. what must it be like to be a beautiful child? Now I've seen some yeah. of my cousins go through this where like they're really mm -hmm. beautiful, but they're not sexy. They're children. Yeah. Yeah, they're exactly. they're beautiful. So it's almost like unreal so then i start to think of the the way we think of beauty is like the way we think of art what does it evoke in us what does it inspire mm -hmm. in us and so i tend to be very um i guess it depends on how i'm viewing something but then you as, as you and i have talked about in the past like when i see certain types of facial structures i'm like oh that's like a stark key, like striking like yes like Tilda Swindon is one of my favorite. When I look at her, I'm like, what mm -hmm. is going on with her face? But I don't know mm -hmm. if she's considered beautiful or sexy. I just, to mm. me, I'm so drawn to her, you know? So I struggle with this as well. Um, I think I think of, I think there's like a beauty that is sort of like a natural beauty. And I really mm -hmm. admire that more. And then I judge people on effort beauty, 
or effort uh, aesthetic. Mm-hmm. But I, mm-hmm. I don't know that I, I just know what I know when I see it. But I, I think there's also sort of an objective beauty standard that could exist outside of all of our opinions. Mm-hmm. I just, and I have an idea of what that is. I think it's when you look at a person and no matter who you are, what background, you're like, that's obviously a beautiful person. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I I know when people look at me, you either love or hate how I look. So I know yeah. I'm not one of those people. You know what I'm saying? It's it's kind of like so. The, I think that is what the channel Coves Coves explores, and this mm. isn't meant to be like a shout out to him. I'm just giving credit as to we where I learned to articulate these concepts. Um, there are universal standards, and they tend to be just around symmetry, um, appearing healthy, um, and uh, good proportionality for your yeah. ethnicity. Right? Like you can't universally say big noses are attractive or unattractive is really going to depend on the, the face of the person. Um, so proportionality and like the harmoniousness of the face. Um, there's like some general rules for like men and women that are a little mm-hmm. different for how like their beauty is judged. Um, and then, but then I think like uh, Tilda Swinton example, right? Like she is symmetrical. She has good facial development. Um, and she, um, I'm trying to picture her in my head right now, but she has really striking features that are like unusual. Right. Yeah. So I think that also adds another layer because when we think of beauty, a lot of like, maybe this is like where the difference between men and women breaks down a little bit because women think supermodels are so, so beautiful. Right. And they tend to have more androgynous features. Yeah. They tend to be a little bit sharper. They're not, uh, they don't have like the soft um, super feminine features all the time, similar to Tilda Swinton. Um, and that is what has been successful for the modeling industry. That's like yeah. a standard for the modeling industry versus um, someone like, oh, I'm trying to think. What about Angelina Jolie? What do you think about her? Where does she fit into it? Oh, no, I, I think she's beautiful. It's, it's, she's like one of those, those, I think, classic beauties like Monica Bellucci, you know, like an Ornella Muti, Naomi Campbell. Like it, it's yeah. just like a... It, it, I would call that, um, I don't even want to say it's conventional though, because mm-hmm. for them, like, I feel like they're so above that. I don't know. They stand like, out, like, they do. It, yeah, like they, they, in addition to, I think being, but maybe that is just my bubble because mm-hmm. because I just personally can't imagine anybody saying like, oh, Naomi Campbell, like, yeah, is ugly. I'm just like, what? <laughs> you know, like I can't. Yeah, I can't um, imagine it. Whereas like someone like, um, Lady Gaga, who I think is super hot, I think she can be a little bit polarized. Great example, yeah, yeah, for sure. She, I really loved her growing up too because of mm-hmm. her her nose and like the way mm-hmm. her features really stood out. I think she's Italian, right? Like, doesn't she talk about mm-hmm. that a lot? Like, she yeah. has these features. Yeah. I think she's beautiful too, but I, I can't tell. Oh, especially bare faced like Gaga, like mm-hmm. in um, mon- uh, what's that? Is it called Monster? What's the song she has where she's talking about it and she's like. She's got this like fake bare face makeup where it's makeup, obviously, but it's like no Mm. makeup look and she looks beautiful, just gorge. But again, Mm. I I can tell if I have a bias towards people who remind me of myself as well Mm -hmm. because those striking (laughs) features really stand out to me and it makes me feel Mm -hmm. more seen and then it reminds me that there's like if I find them beautiful because, you know, I grew up like super insecure about that stuff, obviously. And at the same Mm. time, I've grown into accepting that like someone the other day was so sweet. They told me I look like um, like a Roman or a Greek statue. And I was like, stop. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And they're like, literally step on me. I was like, oh, my God, stop. Like, thank you. That is a thing I had to grow into because it's Mm -hmm. not traditionally feminine the way I was raised. Yeah. It is like a masculine femininity that I've grown into. I I, I do wonder about that, too. Like in in talking about beauty, like you mentioned insecurity. Um, I find that very interesting because for me, I don't remember having any real insecurities, if that makes sense. Mm, yeah. And it's not because I'm hot shit or whatever, but I think it's just because I was kind of brought up with that beep bop beauty where it's like, it is what it is. Like what actually matters, like, you know, like beep bop beauty, like the beauty of like what your mama gave you, your facial yeah. symmetry or whatever. That's like maybe 20 to 30%. Like people care, but like, you know, I will, like, I always say this, I will take somebody who is like dead average 5.5, who takes care of themselves, who makes an effort oh. with themselves, who, you know, likes the things I like, who I have things in common with over a 10 out of 10 who like, you know, doesn't enjoy exercising or does it like take yeah. care of their health is maybe a little bit more sloppy for my standards. Like I'm not judging how anybody wants to live their lives, but like, you know, um, so that's, that's what I always say. Like, I will take like an average looking on the beat pop beauty scale 
who puts in effort into their appearance, into their health, yeah. into their life. It says so much about us when we do, though. I Mm -hmm. think that's the problem. And I not to – well, that sounds like a judgment. It is slightly (laughs) a judgment off my own values, and I do think that I value uh, hygiene and aesthetic, and I do Mm -hmm. think I value people who have a sense of identity enough to express that, even if their expression is like, I'm going to be molded and plain and look like everyone else and look like a cookie cutter. That's still a choice. And so Mm -hmm. I think for me, I pay attention to those details of – when a person has the ability to dress themselves like much like an avatar or a game character, how did you choose mm-hmm. to take care of or dress your body? And I think a mm-hmm. lot of the relationships, like you said, you maybe didn't have the same experience with insecurity. My bubble informed me and like I had to question myself all the time about it. And it wasn't until I realized like, oh my gosh, are we just like evolved animals on a planet? So am I basically <laughs> like casting judgment on how a lion looks to another uh-huh. lion? <laughs> then I was like, okay, fine. But then you take into that consideration, that thoughtfulness about how you keep up. And I think that that is the place in which I feel Mm -hmm. like it's appropriate to cast a little bit of judgment or at least gain judgment. Mm -hmm. Exactly. No, exactly. Like, I'm not going to place, like, for me, and I know other people are different, but for me, the Bebop beauty is not a value judgment. It just is. It just is. If you're, if you're Bebop, you know, 5.5, that's kind that's cool. It just is what it is. Just like Bebop, you are 6'3". Or totally. beep up, you are five four, right? Totally. It, it just is. <clears throat> beep up, you are twenty five years old, right? It's it's like it it doesn't. It, it, it is what it is. It's it whatever. Is what it is. Yeah. We're so all for me, I find cards. You know. Yeah, exactly. Like so, for me, it seems um, strange that it seems strange that people would place like some sort of value judgment on that. Um, mm. But I also recognize that, you know, such a thing does exist, like, as a, uh, like, discrepancies between how people who are generally considered attractive are treated versus people who aren't and how they come away with those experiences and stuff like that. Um, but I, I do. And, and then I also, like, wonder, like, okay, I think for, and I, I, let me just also be clarify that I think, like, beauty is a bell curve. Yes. Like, most people are, like, fours, five, sixes, if we want to use that rating system. And then like a 10 is like giga rare. I don't know if I've ever seen a 10 in my life. And ones are giga rare too. I feel like people have like um, this delusion in either direction about where they fall. Most, a lot of people, especially if they're like average, will say, I'm a seven, you know, to like seem Everyone humble. Everyone loves like, to be seven. seven. Everyone wants seven to be a seven. Seven is solidly above average. I would yeah. be happy with a seven. Like if somebody said I was a seven, I'd be like, hell yes, that's a solid like, two standard deviations away from the hell yeah um but like most people are just fives and or the people who are like i'm a solid three and then you go look at them and they're like a normal person and you're like what you know you're not a three you're not a two you're not a one like that is giga giga rare like i cannot stress how rare being like a one or a ten is I'm t- I agree so much with this, actually, because, OK, there is oh, this is so bad. I'm not going to point fingers because like I'm not going to. But there is a video on the Internet that I show people in my real life where I'm like, do you want to see what a real three and a four looks like? You want to see what a two looks like <laughs> this? How many people do you know who look like this? And the irony is that that might have been how they were born. But a couple surgeries here and there. I'm talking basic stuff, fixing teeth, yep. getting yeah. some things changed, losing some weight huge change they would be about average but their genetics like people are born Mm -hmm. with like gaps in their teeth they're born with things Mm -hmm. that are just like not as aesthetically pleasing though some people pull it off Mm -hmm. and those people i think okay so here's okay here's where my brain goes so my brain goes there's people with missing teeth that look like tilda swindon status so they can pull it off right it's like Mm -hmm. cute but then they're just averagey looking people with no sense of style who have gap teeth and then it just looks like okay well like you can put in some effort if you want yeah, which is like so and funny. Mm-hmm. That's what I was also going to bring up. So I think for most people who are average, um, things like cosmetic procedures and surgeries, they could help you kind of a couple of points or whatever. But I don't think they're going to make your life that much better. That like yeah. you should be pursuing them unless your appearance is your job. Like if you're a model, actress, True. whatever, blah blah blah. But like I guess if you do like naturally you know and you you notice your life is being negatively impacted people are avoiding you people are treating you poorly um and you know you feel like you've exhausted moving across bubbles and you Mm -hmm. feel like you've you know like I, i feel like there are definitely instances where cosmetic procedures can vastly improve a person's life and their self confidence and everything um but 
I haven't met a person like that in real life mm. because and like I, I and I always say this like I think I'm a normal person I think I live in a pretty normal place like I live in a big city yeah I've seen like lots of people and like for most of them I think like when they don't look their best it's usually just because they're going through something they're sick right now they you know um are having issues with their mental health and things like yeah. that it's the effort part it's the basic effort part not like cut up yeah. your bones and cut up your flesh part it's yes. the you know just like oh you need to you know maybe brush your teeth or you need mm-hmm. to maybe get some new clothes um that kind of thing which is like i think very um variable um versus like somebody who I see in the street and I'm like you absolutely need to get like this this and this done I've never met a person like that and I think a lot of people like when they hear this and like that's why I don't want the audience to like be like oh my god but I am that person it's like you probably aren't yeah you, it's like yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. The, the the levels conversation of like ones and stuff you yeah. probably aren't like yeah. you you're not <laughs> I agree no I met okay so I've met one single person on this mm-hmm. planet that when I looked at them I was like you lost the genetic lottery, my friend. And I met one person like that. And when I met him in person, he was so sweet and so lovely. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, okay, you've got a great personality-ish. Though, because of the way he looked, it did inform his belief systems. And you could see that it was reflected in that. Mm. And I will say, there's nothing less attractive than, like, malicious, like, pitting of the self. So what happens is, and I've seen it happen, okay, two ways. I've met one person that I thought was like, okay, you lost the genetic lottery, my friend. And there are Mm -hmm. things we can do. But in general, someone's going to have to really love you for your personality. And because of the way he looked, I don't think he had the personality to quite back it up fully. Mm -hmm. But he was he Mm -hmm. was really a good person. I could tell like in his core. So I was I felt bad that he got like the sort of in the stick. No one to like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then I've met. I can think of like maybe two people in my head right now that I'm like, you are very attractive, not necessarily tens, but Mm -hmm. very, very attractive and very alienated. And so you don't Mm. have any real friends. You don't have any real relationships because you're so pretty. And they've done so many things on this where you would think pretty people would get approached more. But people are quite intimidated by pretty people. Mm. So I feel like there's something to be said about the consequences of both things when you're on the extremes. But when you're on the average, you know what I mean? I think we're getting more of at least a mixed bag. People who like us and people who don't, which is probably Mm. better than having one extreme of the other. Exactly. And to also talk about like, um, people who aren't attractive, they do tend to be treated poorly. And so they end up, you know, developing complexes around that, which can be very difficult to overcome, for sure. And and, like, I'm not here to say that I've ever had an experience like that. Um, I can't imagine like, that sounds awful. Um, And I also think like, but that is kind of, we all have our burdens to overcome. Yes. <laughs> and unfortunately for some people, that is the burden of having to somehow accept that that was your law in life and not letting it embitter you. Yeah. it's Because so that will, that'll only make it worse. <laughs> or also, you know, I think going to channels like Cove's because I think he presents information in such a non-judgmental way. Yeah. Um, going to those resources, going to like, asking for like plastic surgeons because they are artists they understand aesthetic very well and asking them hey what are my options because I think like this could really improve my life yeah um yeah I think I think it's it's as you grow you know you kind of have to accept those certain things and be like okay I can either fix it or I can be like you know what fuck you world like you're gonna treat me shitty because I'm like this well I'm gonna go do my thing anyway Yeah. yeah and um and I think that's – for me, I value that more. That's so hot, dude. Like, going, even when right? you just said exactly. it, I was like, <laughs> no, there's something really attractive about the fuck it. Yeah. No, I'm just going to do it anyways. And you're like, oh, yeah. nothing's holding exactly. this person back. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, But, again, so much easier said than done. But that is why it's so attractive. That is why it's attractive when somebody ex- knows and accepts yeah. what they look like who they are and like what resulted from it and yeah. is like okay well if nobody's gonna love me I'm gonna love me like from a, and it, that is so rare and like I'm not expecting like people to do that right. but I think that's 
the top goal. tier for sure. That's like yeah. the ideal. You know, look, in life, at least growing up in like a religious bubble in my background and lo- learning about fairy tales and lores and the hero's journey, there is something to be said about like how many beauty stories did we grow up hearing? Like fairy tale mm-hmm. stories, you know, loving people for who they are, not what they look like. There's something to be said about the ideal being that we would all face ourselves and really go on this journey quickly. But for some of us, it's going to last a lifetime. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there's something to be said. I also think like one of the things I need as a, like a great example, I think about as aesthetics my partner and I talk discuss this all the time is like I need somebody who's really honest about what I look like Mm -hmm. because my whole life growing up around a lot of Middle Eastern people well everyone's like well you're beautiful I was like okay well we all look the same (laughs) so it's not the same but then obviously I had Mm -hmm. some cousins that came out and most of us by between 16 and 18 got nose jobs because our noses were Mm -hmm. so big but I didn't because I was afraid I'd come out looking worse because some of my cousins like getting rid of your bump did not help Mm-hmm. It made it worse. But, you know, everyone does what they're going to do. So my partner and I, like one of the things I love about him is his radical honesty about how I look, because obviously I have a face that mm-hmm. is to him beautiful, but he understands. He's like, oh, yeah, like sometimes you do look like a boy. I was like, yeah, ra- thank you. <laughs> like sometimes when my hair is really pulled back and I'm in a hoodie and I'm like, what's up? And he's like, oh, my God. For a second, I legit was like. What's happening? And I was like, no, I'm still a girl, but I'm a girl who like has that lived experience and I'm actually mm-hmm. pretty okay with it. There's some part of my brain that's like, yeah, I'm a dude. What's up, bro? <laughs> but like, I'm, you know what I mean? And then obviously as a little girl, it really hurt my feelings. But I think as I've gotten older, especially as I've moved, this is so ironic. As I've moved more into my top space, I've wanted to look more masculine. Mm. So what I think is hot now is not what I thought was hot in my early 20s for myself. I do. I was going to say, like, I I totally relate to that Middle Eastern girl aesthetic. As you know, I'm Armenian. So, yes, all my cousins, like, I have to, like, talk my mom out of getting a nose job every year. It's a thing. (laughs) Um, Same. I have people call me on the, like, literally, like, so that nose job. And I'm like, (laughs) Yeah. Um, But um, on looking, like, masculine, I do wonder, like, is that like a thing thing or is it because you and I kind of live in the US? Because as you know, I've been on that Jubilee video and a lot of the comments say that I look like masculine. I look like a dude. A lot of the stream reactions were like that. And I'm like, oh, interesting. Okay. Um, And I'm like, okay, so maybe they haven't been around Middle Eastern women a lot or just, you know, or they just think I look masculine. And that's that to me is fine because my... The people who I need to find me attractive find me attractive. So it's exactly, fine. <laughs> I think it's. I think it. I, I call it white people problems, even though I know people mm-hmm. in the least were white or whatever. But like, I also mm-hmm. think it's like that. Yeah, it is that. Um, because the, the crescent moon shape, just literally. like. literally so like the jaw I have this nose it makes me Mm -hmm. every partner I've been with they always do this to me they're so sweet they act like for them it's the first time they're having this conversation and for me it's literally the hundredth you know what you really look like Brittany and I'm like huh they're like you look like a witch and I'm like "Uh uh-huh like I've never heard that my whole life but it's true like I I get it and so there is something to be said about the way they embrace it all my partners have all my partners are like you're gonna become like Yubaba or Zaniba from Spirited yeah. Away, Miyazaki. And I'm like, honestly, goals. So like, yeah. I'm down. <laughs> That's another one I've heard a lot too on the comments is you look like a witch, like yeah. you look like a man, blah, blah, blah. Like that nose, yeah. that jaw, that chin. And I'm like, yeah. And some people yeah. love it. Some people hate it. Like to, to me, there's not an inherent value judgment exactly in saying that, that we have androgynous features, this, that. Like it just is. It and is. okay. I'll tell mm-hmm. you this. The same way I feel... Uh, well, okay. When I'm, this is so weird. When I, it's so bubbly, huh? When I'm, blah, 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 depending on the bubble, like I know where I stand, right? And I also know what aesthetic people are going for. And I know that that, I play into that. So if I'm mm. going into a bubble, let's say for a work event, and I'm like, which girls are going to be there? Which boys are going to be there? What's mm-hmm. the aesthetic everyone's going to expect of me? And how do I bring my aesthetic to that standard? Mm. So I don't, change who I am to fit in. I emphasize how I'm different, Mm -hmm. but I match the standard of expectation. So if it's like black tie, I'm going to do black tie Britney version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my like loophole. When you look different, you find the power in your own aesthetic. No, exactly. That's, that's something. um, So this is actually another tool that could be useful for people and could not. It's kind of like astrology for uh, style. It's called the Kibbe body types or body um, identities. I am no expert. 
but um, some people have found it to be helpful for their style journey, and I found it helpful. Um, so, for example, like I have pretty broad shoulders, mm -hmm. um, so I'm like I don't generally look good in turtleneck, and oh, like just. Yeah. And boom, like, so that doesn't mean I can't dress warm. That doesn't mean I can't wear sweaters. I just need to consider the neckline. Like, if I want to dress for my body, um, I will choose more open necklines. Um, I'll choose things that show off my shoulders, my back. Um, and I, I like emphasizing how big my shoulders are. I don't like feeling constricted. Um, so that's just, like, another – I think that's it's a matter of, like, dressing for yourself. Like, I think yeah. anybody can – um, dress formal, can dress casual, can dress, you know, for the beach, festival, whatever. But it's a matter of finding the right cuts, colors, fabrics that Absolutely. will um, harmonize with, with your body. Absolutely. I will say this as well. I was, I'm growing out my hair, you know, as mm -hmm. long as it stays on my head. And one of the goals is to get it as long as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. So there is no plan to cut my hair or keep it short. My plan is to grow it out and only cut it when it needs to get cut. Because my auntie, God rest her soul, had this, she would visit from Iraq and she would always come. And as a child, I just, she looks just like how I think I'm going to look when I age. And so mm -hmm. we, I, you know, she's my mom's sister and she had the longest, most beautiful silver braid. And I was just like, this, oh. since I was a baby, it's like, this is what I want. This is what I want as I age. Not only to feel connected to her, but in Iraq, like, there's something to be said about a person who has the patience to let their hair grow out because it's hot out there, girl. So, and she was traditional. So she wore, like, head mm -hmm. coverings and made sure she was, because she was out in the sun a lot. So there's something to be said about even the connective, like, the memories you have to aesthetic. Like, mm -hmm. I know it, like, my mom and I talk about this often because she's just like, Betsy, you're so beautiful. And I was like, do you know that people think I'm a man? And she'll be <sighs> like, how? And all my brothers will be like, how? Are they stupid? And I'm like, when you grow up with a bunch of women who look similar <laughs> and you guys don't even understand, like there are groups of people who, yeah, even in stores, I've been like, sir, can I get you, like, can I help you get something? And I'm like, I'll turn around. And when they make eye contact <laughs> to me, they realize they made a mistake. But it's like, I don't mind being mistaken for a man. There's nothing wrong with looking like mm -hmm. a man. But I will say it is a reflection of culture and bubbles to show yeah. us that we do not know what women look like. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. These people don't know what Middle Eastern women look like, which they is why your know. brothers and your family and me too. I'm like, what? But also having an experience being called looking like a man. Um, I've never been mistaken for one in public but also I try to avoid being in public if I can to be honest but um but I've been I've, I have that experience of being said that I yeah. look like a man um I'm like okay so I understand that you just don't have much interaction with the Middle Eastern bubble or bubble yes. that's yes. cool I guess all right that's, <laughs> have that's what's been so hard okay growing up in the 90s and 2000s and coming up to this modern age the internet has really helped I think show the world how different people look around the world. But I've been told that where I will find certain ethnicities really, really attractive. And I'll hear mm -hmm. from people like, oh, they're so masculine, though. And I'm like, oh, that's probably why I find them attractive. <laughs> like the irony is that, uh, look, I think it's pretty common for people to find what they are around attractive or what they are, mm -hmm. at least from my understanding. So it makes sense that I find other Middle Eastern people attractive. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. makes sense that I even when I – I even ended up with a European that I, I kind of consider like spicy white. So I'm like, oh, thank God. Because I think if I ended up with somebody who was like a very specific kind of European or white, we, I would just have – I've always had a harder time with my whiter partners where they have even felt like I don't know how to join your family. I don't know how to be a part of this aesthetic. And like I, I think a part of it is like if you don't go around something long enough, whether it's beauty mm -hmm. standards or cultural standards or whatever, you just don't know where to fit in or how to adapt. And so it can feel really uncomfortable. And I think that's why, you know, I will say this, though. Okay, ca tangent, caveat. I will say this. <laughs> My partner and I have been – this is so shallow, th like, in a, in a way. So don't, nobody take me too seriously here. We don't know if our kids are going to be cute. Ooh! That was, girl, you know, that that's always like been my, my, like one of my things. Like when I look for a partner, I'm like, I want cute kids. And my partner and I, we joke around. So he's, he's British. So yeah. he had, he has much softer features than me, which yeah. in my head, I'm like, oh, great. It'll be a beautiful melding balance. And he's like, no, no, no. Here's what's going to happen. They're going to get your big ass nose and my tiny ass chin. No. And they're going to be, <laughs> and that's going to be, oop. Uh oh. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Sorry okay, about that. So my laptop just decided to clonk out. Technology. Um, I was going to say, big yeah. Big nose, small chin. Big nose, tiny chin. And I'm like, 
I hope that doesn't happen. Because we plan on having two kids. And Same. if one of them ends up like that, and then the other one gets into this beautiful meshing of balance, ooh, That's so that'll hard. be like, oh, it is I'm, so hard. <laughs> People totally underestimate. Look, this is. I okay. I will appreciate two things about my mother specifically. One, she mm-hmm. always told us we were lovable, wonderful, yes. hugged us, kissed us, showed affection, and never made us feel like our aesthetic wasn't beautiful. Okay, mm-hmm. and two, we were pretty honest as a family. And so, if somebody was sort of in a category, <laughs> I have one sibling who tends to be. He has a very specific trope, and I'm always like, "You are aware of your trope, yes?" And he's like, "Yes," or your archetype, or whatever you call it, like his aesthetic. He's like literal. Yeah. When you look at him, you know who he hung out with in high school. And I was like, are we aware of this? And he's like, yes. And I was like, can we elevate it? So like food, you can take a cheeseburger and elevate it. Can we take your style and elevate it? And he goes, well, what does that do? And I was like, it sends a signal to people that you're serious about how you take care of yourself hygienically, especially. It sends a signal that you're going to be a good partner and a capable father. Believe it or not, this does translate unless you're in a specific bubble. But in our bubble, in the middle class, Orange County to San Diego bubble, okay, (laughs) you got to look at standard of pretty. Now, that's California bubble, so maybe we're a little harsher than, like, the Midwest. But Mm -hmm. in in California, there's a standard of expectation. Okay? (laughs) Yep. So we got to reach the basic standard. And so we'll have those conversations. And so I I appreciate – the second thing I appreciate for my mom more than anything is that she didn't let me wear makeup till I was 18. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you're going to learn to love your face. And I was like, fuck, okay. And I did, and it was hard. I cried a lot. But she also let me take off school if I was having a really bad acne day, like a really bad one. She'd be like, stay home, relax. This doesn't define you, but you need to learn to live with the fact that this is what your body goes through. And I was like, Mm -hmm. it was so hard. It was so hard, but it was so worth it. Because now that I'm older, one, I don't wear makeup on the daily. So this is my podcast makeup. I wear eyeshadow, mascara, lipstick. And this is as much makeup as I wear. And I love makeup. I love the aesthetic of makeup. But I, as a human, as I've gotten older... I'm more into the natural stuff right now. So I asked my partner, I said, do you mind that I don't wear makeup on a daily basis? And he's like, no, like I dated you without makeup. I'll marry you without makeup. And this will be our life without makeup. But for sexy lingerie days, do I balance it out with some mascara sometimes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I like the aesthetic to look a certain way when I'm presenting myself. But at the same time, it doesn't matter if I'm all natural because his standard of beauty, even natural, he's like, you're beautiful. So why would you Mm -hmm. need makeup? Makeup is a... What's this called? What we said it earlier. It's a effort. It's a it's an effort thing. It's so, art. It's an artistic expression. Yes. It's, yeah. Yes. Yes. So I will say, in terms of kids, I want to instill in my children: you are individuals. You are independent. We are evolved animals on this planet. Your your aesthetic is your choice, but elevate it. So you can mm-hmm. pick it. You can be goth, but elevate it. You can be D and D, but elevate it. You can be this, but elevate it. So you aren't because I hate to say it. People won't take you as seriously in the world if you do not elevate. And we live in the world, and so we are community members. But at home, you're beautiful no matter what. But if you're dealing with society – so I hope my kids – because he's a very small nose – I hope our kids have a nice balance between the two of our aesthetics. (laughs) And I hope it all ends up okay, but we're only having two. And if there is a discrepancy between the two, like if there's a huge gap in terms of aesthetic, Mm -hmm. one kid's going to have a problem. They're going to need therapy probably because it does impact you. I, I hate to say it. Yeah, like, it like really, even it outside the home, you can. And and the thing is, I wonder too is, like, so in my home, my mom did kind of a little bit differently than your mom, where she was like, "You're both beautiful" or whatever. But she was she paid extra attention to my little sister because she considers that she is more beautiful or looks a little bit more like her. So, um, Ooh, and I that's see. not bad. Yeah, like so, I I'm like, oh yeah, my sister's the pretty sister. I'm the mm. other one. I'm the other sister. My sister's the pretty know? sister. My sister's the pretty sister. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's like, um, and that's not a value judgment. And no. I kind of had to grow up and learn that that was a, a, my mother making a value judgment. That was my mother making an observation and, mm. you know, making an observation because now, okay, I have a better idea of where I stand in the world. Uh, my mother is also very aesthetically minded. She um, is very artistic and, you know, is very into like harmonious, you know, things. She notices people in the street. She's like, oh, that person's very handsome. That that woman's yeah. very beautiful. Like, this is why. Um, so she's 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 always like instilled that in me that yeah. it's it's nice to appreciate. But at the end of the day, it it doesn't mean too much. Um, yeah. And, and it's yeah, a different so journey, think, too. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. like being the pretty sister, my sister and I choose different mm-hmm. – yeah everything like the journey's different yeah but I really appreciate my sister's it's okay you know what's so strange because my sister's the prettier sister I think she Mm -hmm. it funny enough she is more serious about things like she got her college degree she got her education Mm. and I didn't value being very serious about much so I value more like rough aesthetic and I didn't care about looks growing up and I cared more about like what I could accomplish. So funny mm-hmm. enough, I'm more career driven and she is more like, I don't know, standard driven, which I think is really important as well. Yeah. I think we have like a similar difference with my sister and I as well. Um, I don't want to, you know, I mean, she's, she's kind of on the internet, but um, she, so for me, I'm definitely more career driven than her mm. and she is more aesthetic driven for sure. So she does like very light makeup. She like does things with her hair. She dyes her hair. Mm. Um, she collects purses and bags and she has like a very like feminine or traditionally feminine for Western standards aesthetic, mm-hmm. very much like fitting into that and attitude also. Um, so yeah, that's definitely like a, also a difference I noticed between us. I wonder, yeah. I wonder if that is why, um, or if it's because I'm the older sister. Ooh, because I'm of the older sister, the older sister, sister yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't have the option to like fuck around with, um, with. Uh, well, I, I have a degree, uh, but I couldn't like get a literature degree or an art yeah. degree. That was it. That was I not wonder. an option. Absolutely not. <laughs> I do wonder. Like, um, it's weird though because uh, I think my. I think everyone chooses their path differently. I think, okay, this is kind of like connected to determinism and sort of free will. I think because of the aesthetic you appear as within the bubble you appear in, you might be pushed into a direction whether you like it or not, but also your personality is sort of attached to that aesthetic. Like, have you Mm -hmm. ever seen those TikToks or Instagram posts where it's like there's always two different kinds of sisters and it's like the tomboy sister and the really hot sister? Okay. So my sister is hot bisexual hot, so it's, like, different than standard girly girl. Mm -hmm. But, like, she's – okay. And I'm more, like, rough around the edges. Like, I wear boy clothes. I'm more of a – like, I like it. I like – even the way I sit is sort of, like, a boy. Like, I don't think Mm -hmm. she'd ever sit that way. It'd be so awkward if she tried. I'd be like, what are you doing? Why are you even trying? I think it's complimentary to move into the direction, like, you were given, the strengths you were given. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's natural. I don't know if it's determined for me. But I know that once I give in to, like, actually how I am – Instead of how I think I should have been, I'm so much happier. I'm yes. just so much more in my joy. So I think I stopped fighting at girl, like straightening my hair and hating my curls mm-hmm. and just like, why am I like this? And why is this my life? I has just become now. I can't believe I didn't embrace my curls earlier. How earlier? How could I have denied myself this amazing? My hair just does this. I just get out of the mm-hmm. shower and it does this. Yes. How, how could I have ever doubted? People pay good money. For their hair to do that. <laughs> and I, what's the comment I get every fucking time? Is your hair real or not? I love <laughs> Which is curls. a huge Are compliment. Literally. And then I go right out of the shower, baby. Right out of the shower. Some leave-in conditioner and we're mm-hmm. good to go. Let's go. So, like, there is something to be said about realizing what you have. The grass is always mm-hmm. greener, right? Look, look, I'm never – when I made the decision, do I want to do philosophy or OF full-time or sex work full-time, what did I want to do? I was like, well – the aesthetic I'd want to have that I think I'd be the most successful in, I don't – I wasn't born with that aesthetic. Yeah. And no amount of surgery is going to get me there. So I'm going to choose philosophy and chill where I know I can excel in a career-driven way. So on the side, I still do like all this nude stuff and everything in this art I like. But now I'm playing into the aesthetic that I am and not the one I know would make me tons of money. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Because like if you're going to go into like full-on sex work to make like a lot of money, you want to be whatever is the largest audience to get to you, mm-hmm. right? And I don't have that, but I, I will say that I appreciate that I can go in other directions because I don't have it. I think it's also like, I think you've spoken on the, about this on your channel before. Mm. Um, the way I sim- summarize it is mind your business, water your own grass, joy. <laughs> that's, that. that's, that's, I um, love that. that's our new motto. Um, but I do. Yeah. I've also had a similar experience. Um, I saw that the very delicate kind of like a very particular, um, so for me, I don't find words like feminine, masculine, super valuable, but mm. I'll use them here. But like the super feminine kind of delicate flower kind of woman with like yeah. the teeny little shoulders and like um, kind of like, uh, I guess, the, the, categ- the c- categories of women w- uh, would fit maybe like Belle Delphine. Um, and, and then she has like another subgenre 
right? Yes. But she is, she accommodates petite. Yes. She's very, you know, feminine and delicate. She's got the and then, um, nose ever. Yes. Like, I love Belle's work, but every time I see her, I was like, I could, there's no part of me that would ever look like this. It exactly. Would never work. Exactly. So I, I've definitely had to learn to love my big shoulders. And yes. you know what? That's this is a good frame to build muscle on. Let's go. I'm gonna be a muscle mommy. Like girl, right? yes. Can I tell you my goal? If mm. I can just get back into working out, fingers crossed in June I start with someone, maybe I want big ass arms and my shoulders back. Yes. I used to love my big ass shoulders. <laughs> and I want my big ass arms back. And I just want to like move stronger and more into that like yes. dominance role that I'm aging into. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad my aesthetic has moved in this direction because it just fits me so easy it's the easiest aesthetic I could have chosen so I'm like oh thank god I'm just playing into who I already am um now Mm -hmm. in my 30s like (laughs) well that's also what I talk about um when I say I don't think there's a separation of mind and body I think your body informs Mm -hmm. your consciousness I think if I had a different body I'd have a completely different outlook I'd have a completely different worldview and aesthetic uh, and and uh, mm-hmm. consciousness, even like something that could change about your body will change your outlook. Totally. If, you know, if my arm gets chopped off, okay, well, now I need to readjust my perspective, my plans, everything around that fact. Um, and so I, I think like we definitely, our personalities and our bodies, I think are interwoven. I don't Ooh. think there's like a separation between them. I know we're like, on a completely different topic, but I think this is interesting too, which Super also ties ties back into um, it's like the chicken or the egg. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think you know, there's also like this. There's been studies done right on the halo effect and the horns effect. The halo effect being that you are assumed to be a good person if you are attractive, mm. yes. and you are assumed to not be a good person if you're not attractive. Yep. And but where does that come from? What is going on there? Is it as simple as, oh, I don't want you to have my babies, so <laughs> get, get yeah. out of here. Or, like, what? where does that come from? Um, and that's, but I think, like, we can pretty safely say, I think so. I think, I think it is that. Because I think that also a level of attractiveness, I think if you're, like, way above or way below average, like you said, I think way above like 10, people are intimidated. Yeah. People might like want to take advantage of you in some way. Um, and if you are way below average, that might indicate that maybe your offspring wouldn't be as healthy. This is like pure, by the way, like Evo psych brain. Like this is, yeah. this is, I'm not saying that this is how people should operate. I'm just wondering if, if that is how it began in a yeah. way. And like now we're dealing with the consequences of that. Cause I do think it's unfortunate, but then I think about people like Elliot Roger, mm. the Santa Barbara, UC Santa Barbara shooter. Yeah. He like is aesthetically pleasing to me. He was, that I was think clearly not him the hottest of all incels. Like, like he's, it was not his problem. Wasn't his appearance. It was, personality, and yet it right? was outlook. And, and yet I think a lot of like, um, incels do focus on that and yeah. it's really unfortunate because so many of them are fairly cute They're, so many of them yeah. it is their appearance is just fine and you know like solely based on a picture i'd swipe right mm-hmm. um i also see that in the um so the cove's discord server which is free but and it's a really nice space um i see a lot of young men um posting you know and they're they're fine they're average um and they're saying this, this, and this is wrong with me. Mm. And I'm just like, okay, you are really overinflating to what extent this is affecting your quality of life. Because I look at them and they're like, oh yeah, that's a cute guy. Or like, yeah, that's a, that's a yeah. normal looking guy. Yeah. And it's really unfortunate. I think, I, think, I think women do this too. I think everybody does this. But I think part of growth is to realize what, what is actually causing what. Because I think it's really easy. It's easy to blame something you can't even help something you were born with and say, this is the cause for all my problems. Cause then you don't Absolutely. have to take any responsibility. Then Absolutely. you don't have to put in any effort. If you're like, Oh, this is what I look like. And this is the cause of everybody hating me and everybody um, ostracizing me. And I can't do anything about it. Maybe because I'm 17 and I don't have money for a plastic surgeon or, or because you know, I'm whatever, like this is just unfixable, but yeah. it, it's, 
yeah. most of the time, I'd say that's that's not that. And I think people really, really overinflate like how much their looks affect their life. But I don't know. I'm just an average bitch over here, just living an average life. So who okay. knows? Who Hold knows? On. I got <laughs> tons of thoughts. These are such good ideas because I do think like the chicken and the egg conversation about, you know, because if I was a mm-hmm. six foot Amazonian woman, like I had a girlfriend growing up, not a girlfriend, mm-hmm. a friend who was a girl and she was yeah. six, four. And I was like this young queer girl coming out in this conservative group. And so she'd be like, Brittany, come stand, come hug me. And she knew that would place <laughs> my face, like right below her boobs or right above, <laughs> just so I could have them in yeah. my face. And like, this was it. But her personality was like, she wore four inch heels. She mm-hmm. gave zero fucks. Like she was like, I'm tall and I'm going to duck under this door to come over. This is the body yeah. I was in. And she owned it. And honestly, if she in the future ever became a dominatrix, I don't know, we lost touch, but like I, she would have <laughs> money. So there's something to be said about could she really have been different? Because, like, you know how mm-hmm. – I don't know if you have this, but all my tall friends hunch their fucking backs. It drives me crazy. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, y'all, what are you doing? And they're yeah. like, well, I don't want to be imposing as a woman. I don't want to, like, be imposing mm. and stuff. And I'm like, ugh. And I'm a short person, so yeah. I'm 5'1", and I'm like, what's up? <laughs> I walk through a door because I'm a short person. So short people and tall people alone are having different relationships with existence. I was dating a guy who was 6'4". And too tall, to be honest with you. Like, it looked really weird. And everyone thought I was his kid all the time. It was really <laughs> annoying. Because he was, like, 12 years older. And um, one time, I, I'm a very – I'm a pretty klutzy person. I drop stuff. I break stuff. I, I knock myself into stuff. So one time, we were in my bedroom. We had a – we were renting rooms in a house. And he had his room and I had mine. And he was sleeping in my room that night. And I knocked over a glass of water because I was, like, dancing in my bed. Goofy. And he got really upset with me. And he was like, what are you doing? And I was like – I knocked over a glass of water. No big deal. We'll just dry it. We'll sleep in your bed. What's the big deal? We have two beds. And he was just like, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of you being a person who's like, just you're small. So you think you just wave your arms around and you hit things over and you're not considerate. And I was like, oh, is there something really like the end of the world about this glass of water, like landing on my bed? Mm -hmm. Like, is this like the end of the world? And he was like, it's more like because you're tiny, I feel like you don't think about your space. I was like, because I'm tiny, do I really have to? And then we were talking about this aesthetic. And apparently my tall girlfriend was telling me, a different tall girlfriend was telling me, tall people have like a lot of anxiety apparently over even like Mm -hmm. moving their arms casually. Yeah. And I never thought about it because I was like, yeah, as a short person, I don't really think about much. To be honest, I just kind of go about my day. I'm not going to hit stuff most likely. So maybe there's even like tension that subconsciously subconsciously haunts us so that we don't even realize over height, let alone aesthetic. Ooh. Like you said, people treat you different. Mm-hmm. I remember I was going for a job uh, interview and I wasn't as hot as the girls, the other girls. And he was like, I don't know if I want to put you in this group of girls. You feel me? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I get what you're saying. I was like, put me in the back with the boys. And he's like, are you sure? And I was like, 100. And I didn't care. I was working six days a week. I was making money. It didn't matter. But I knew even there for job interviews, I've been fully, you know, how they, they say it in a way that they can't get like in trouble for it. But he's like, I don't know if you're going to fit with this group of women. Like, you mean the group of hot girls you have in the front to greet customers? I get it. Put me in the back with the boys. I get it. You know, I can't even be mad about it. Honestly, I got more hours anyways. So, but like, okay, depending on your goals, you said the incel stuff. Okay. I think most humans are actually averagely compatible with other humans. I think my partner and I aesthetically match really well. I think we're as handsome as one another. Like, I think when I look at him, I'm like, thank God you're not like a supermodel. And thank God you're not really like unesthetically pleasing. Because honestly, we like, I think we match. And I value matching. But here's the rule. If I elevate, he's got to elevate. So the rule is we together will boost each other. I met his parents. And then I look at my parents. They are so fashionable. They are dressed so nice. And I think it's 30 years of elevating each other that has brought this. But his his parents are hot. Like, my parents are very attractive people. Like, they have nice clothes. They dress similarly. They elevate each other. And I'm like, this is what I want for this relationship. I want us to age into aesthetic and make sure that we are not morphing ourselves to be for each, like, um, we're not, we're so similar. We're not, we don't have to change fundamentally, like, who we are mm-hmm. to be with each other. So it's really easy. But there's something to be said about that. There's something to be said about partners who grow apart because one person doesn't take care of themselves and someone does. Yes. Mm-hmm. All I'm saying is I find people are often single not for the reason they think. Yeah, and it's, I think you know a lot I mean? of it. Yeah, I think. And like, again, I haven't had this experience. So if this is the wrong way to think, I don't know. But for me, um, I tend to think that I'm probably the problem first 
mm-hmm. and be like, okay, like what's going on? You know, like if, if I'm being rejected or if somebody's not attracted to me, I'm thinking, okay, am I making myself attractive to them? You know, am I making myself attractive for the bubble I'm trying to attract? Mm-hmm. And if the answer is no, then why would I expect that they're attracted to me? Um, so like, if I'm like at, at a, if I'm like just only swiping right on the gym bros yeah, and maybe I don't go to the gym and I don't like the gym, why would I expect that they like me? Because mm-hmm. my aesthetic is communicating that I don't go to the gym or the other way around. If you're, um, if you're like, um, I don't know, like a video game person, why would you um, or if you're like trying to pursue like an e-girl or an e-boy, Ooh, yep. why would you as like a gym rat think that yeah. they'd be into you? And so, like, yeah. you know, and of course there's like, you know, intersections of all of those bubbles, but you got to like consider like, what is the group that you are pursuing? Yes. And are you, uh, are you what that group wants? Um, which I know is like a little bit of a generalization, but I think like if, if you try to look for like the pattern of like who you pursue and how, Mm-hmm. at the end of the day baby you're you're the common denominator yeah for Absolutely. for your life so you gotta look at yourself sometimes I think that it's really is, oh yeah I learned that I learned that in my in my adult relationships like I would date like girls and boys and we'd you know some of us like my girlfriend and I both grew up in Orange County we got together in our 20s we were dating going to Disneyland matching each other dressing each other she would literally because she was the top in the relationship she would take me shopping and dress me and she'd be like you are my girlfriend I need you to look like this and we had a BDSM <laughs> relationship so it was really hot it was great I loved when she dressed me up but she actually helped me to this day I still have one of the most memorable dresses we had bought together like I still have it like 10 years later 12 years later whatever it's been because it was so memorable to be in that store with her to put on clothes that made me feel actually sexy she was like Brittany you are a girl and you are sexy and you're gonna wear this dress and I'm like it's I came out I came out of the dressing room I was like girl it is see-through this dress is see-through she's like put it on and come outside and I was like (sighs) I was like so nervous and now here I am walking around naked in Seattle like you know what I mean like it's amazing how many times you change as a person and then your aesthetic changes I used to try to do makeup like I used to try to color my brows I used to try to do loud makeup I never looked good in it and I never was willing to earn the skill to be truly good at it Mm -hmm. And so I had to play again to that natural strength because my skill is in my charisma. Every person I've ever been with tells me I'm hotter in person. I'm like, that's that personality (laughs) shining through, bitch. That's that Mm -hmm. aesthetic that when you really see my whole package together, you're like, oh, Mm -hmm. different than I thought. And I will say that there's something to be said about how important the journey is. Some people are really hot at 22. Not this girl. That was not my journey. I think I've become much prettier as I've aged. My 30s, 10 Mm -hmm. out of 10, way prettier than I've ever been. Confidence really came through for me. Yeah. um, I I, I definitely, there is like that different journey, right? Because I know the girls Mm. in high school who had like their aesthetic figured out. And I, and like my body's not really made for skinny jeans, but I was like, I'm just gonna wear skinny jeans. And like, I looked like an ice cream cone. Like I did not look skinny jeans on these hips were dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not a thing. Um, so, so yeah, I also really started figuring out my aesthetic at the beginning of 2022. Um, so a year ago, you look so um, good in that Jubilee video. By the way, I was like, look oh, how fucking you. good she looks. Like she so clearly <laughs> knows who she is. The aesthetic is so on point. Like you walked into that room, and I was like. Like it's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um. Yeah. So I started like figuring out that you know what I look good in like open necklines. Um. When I emphasize my waist, when I emphasize my hips, um. When I emphasize my shoulders, and yeah. like that's fine. And I didn't have the access or maybe even the desire in high school. In high school, my mm. my top outfit was skinny jeans, tank top, push up bra which got me dress coded a lot. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yeah. yeah. I think in um in high school I didn't even know how to dress myself. I just come from homeschooling, mm-hmm. so I was in public high school for 2 years, but my parents were really cool cuz I went to public school. They really let us dress how we wanted. Um as long as it was modest and mm-hmm. I don't even know what I was thinking, but I would wear the weirdest clothes cuz I was trying to figure out what is my vibe. And I remember the vibe I went for for like a full year was wearing a guitar strap as an accent point for a belt okay. 
Okay. It didn't make any sense. And then I'd wear the same (laughs) clothes like every day, like a uniform. And people would be like, so do you ever wash those clothes? And I'm like, great question. And I was like, so then I started to realize like, okay, wait, you can't wear the same thing every day because people are going to notice and they're going to have an expectation of you looking a specific way. So I was like, what does this mean? So then I joined like different friend groups to see who I wanted. And ultimately, I kind of realized that as a person, I'm the kind of human that like I have a feeling my house is going to be decorated differently in every room. I have too many aesthetics that I like. So my problem even now is like I love Teddy Fresh sweats. I love Teddy Fresh everything. Mm -hmm. But Teddy Fresh is my boy clothes. I buy Teddy Fresh when I want to dress like a boy because I buy their boys sweats and I want it to be chunky and comfortable. But that is a different aesthetic than when I'm dressing like, I don't know, like if I'm going to a BDSM dungeon, right? Mm -hmm. That, oh, and you know what's even funnier about BDSM and aesthetic? is like your clothes tell you if you're a top or a bottom. Your clothes Mm -hmm. signal to other people what you're into. Your clothes say so much about you that I think I've taken, of course, that obviously into my vanilla sphere as well because even there, things say something about you. You know what I mean? And I look, good or bad, because I think it can also be good or bad, you play into your joy and so you seek out the good in those moments. Like if I'm at a business, I don't work in an office, obviously, but if I was working in an Mm -hmm. office and they had a standard of clothes – I would see how much like myself I could dress as well as signaling to the people in the office that I'm serious about my job and I'm here to work because I don't want to play like I want my aesthetic to be played correctly. There's this anime. I always forget its name. I can't. I'll put it on the screen. But this boy in school dresses like conservative but out of out of school has like earrings and punk hair. Oh, and no one oh. Ever, do you know what it oh is? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I is just, it the, it's like a slice of life anime. I think that my is. sister was. It's so good. Oh it's so my gosh. cute. And I can't remember its name, but I have it in my head. I, I have that image in my head. When I watched that, I was like, oh, that that is a playing a game in a different way. You're saying, okay, mm-hmm. in school, I'm going to blend. Outside of school, I'm going to be my loud self. And I think there's a there's a there's um, a, a stress we all go through as we're aging on the journey, which is like, who's more important, me or the bubble? Mm. And sometimes the answer is just both, depending on yeah. your job, you know? I was going to say, like, one of my favorite things about how I've grown into my aesthetic is, so most of my time I spend in my PJs, sweats, etc., including, like, you know, in going to the grocery store. Yeah. And then I have, like, my mid-level outfit, which is, I guess, what would be what I'm wearing now. Like, I have, nice. like, a long skirt, and I have, Cute. like, a, a little tank top. Um, and then what I love about it is when I'm going to a formal event, bitch, Ooh, I pull out the evening gowns, I do up my hair, and then, like, very, very rarely I'll have, like, if my best friend's available, because she does my makeup for me, because I I can't do makeup, she'll do my makeup, and then I come out, and everyone's like, holy shit, and that's my favorite. (laughs) Yay. No, honestly, that's the next step up in my wardrobe, is the next step is to get uh, a formal wear, and also for my Mm -hmm. partner, we're like, okay, we need to buy you a suit. Like, we need to have clothes, because we're aging, we're, you know, we're in our 30s, -hmm. whatever, we're aging into... I, I don't know about you, but I don't feel like a like an adult like my parents are. My parents are real adults. I'm like waiting to like get into my 40s to be a real adult. But when mm-hmm. I'm there, I want to make sure that I have a nice formal dress or suit that says something about my aesthetic. And I do want a suit as well for that mm-hmm. mood when I'm in that mood. And so there's something to be said about money and how money allows you to curate aesthetic way better. My sister and I joke about this all the time. If we had money, we would actually look Mm-hmm. I would say pretty different because we'd be elevated in a way that wouldn't be the same. You know, I'm wearing a Walmart sweater right now. Mm-hmm. It's just really comfy and I love it. It's my favorite comfort sweater <laughs> right now, but it is not elevated. It's homey, I, you know? Yeah. And to bring it back to the beauty discussion, I think I think displays of wealth are part of that and have always yeah. been part of that throughout human history. Yep. And that is why – and I think when people are trying to keep up with the trends – that's what they're trying to keep up with is that display of wealth. So the fact that celebrities can go and get a new face, a new body, a new whatever, that's them displaying wealth. That's them displaying, I can go to my plastic surgeon, pay $50,000 and come out looking completely different. That is the display of wealth because other people can't do that. Other people can't do that. So you got to work right. with like, you know, like I remember back in 2009, like I was told I was a, have a big butt as an insult. As an insult, mm-hmm. I've been I, my eyebrows were yes. made fun of, and yeah. now bitches be are drawing on their eyebrows to look yeah. like mine. Totally. So I think at the end of the day, you gotta and to look like yours, like like uh, you know, it's, it's really it's really funny. Um, I think there I think there's like a 
a flaw for most people to try and follow these wealth display of wealth things. I, I think you can follow it to an extent, but I think for the most part, you should figure out what you are, like what you look like, who are you, and what harmonizes with that. And I think tools like Coves or the Kibbe ID system can really mm-hmm. help some people um, kind of with that. Um, and to figure out really where you stand and not place a value judgment on it. I to agree say, with I, this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, yeah, yeah. To say like, what do I look best in? And, you know, like, and I think that's tough for some people for some reason to not place a value judgment. Like, why can't you say I'm average, I'm 5'4", I'm 25, and that not mean much more than that? Why can't yeah. it be that way? And well, I wonder. <laughs> it's that pressure from the bubbles, like you said. So when you're having that, mm-hmm. like, conversation with yourself, that introspective moment, it has to be – what am I like when I'm living for me? And what am I like when I have to play a game or live for the Mm -hmm. bubble in some aspect, right? Um, Wait, hold on. You you said something in it. Oh, one of the things that I've told a lot of men, because I've seen men struggle with this, I think more generally speaking, is that I always tell like the really skinny guys who are just like kind of lanky and they're going like, what am I going to grow into my body? I'm like 35 probably. (laughs) You have to gain weight. Like you have to be, my dad was so stick thin all his life. And then he hit his like thirties and he started to gain weight. And now my dad's like this biker dude, but mm-hmm. that aesthetic that a lot of like my brothers, some of them have his original body type. I tell them, I'm like, once you gain weight, once you work out, once you put on muscle, you'll have that guy body that you're looking for. That isn't a boy body, but that boy body is your nature. It is like what you were given. So you kind of have to like change that as you age, but also wait for the time, wait for that change to happen. I think also like play into it, play into that boy aesthetic. Like, uh, like like I mentioned uh, on the Cove server, like so many uh, of these quite good looking or average guys who have these insecurities, one of them posted and was like, I, you know, like, what do you guys think? Um, I can't grow a beard. And he looked Mm -hmm. like a K-pop boy. Like, like a Timothy, like a Timothy, Timothy Chalamet type, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that is in right now. Yeah, exactly. And that is what I told him. Meanwhile, a bunch of the dudes were saying, oh, use minoxidil to grow your beard, like start working out. And I'm like, no, 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 what are you doing? That's going to look weird. That's going to yeah. just, you're going to just be disappointed that you can't be like Chris Hemsworth. But that's okay because you're Timothy Chalamet. You yeah, don't need literally. to be Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> know your trope in the story. Know who you are in the yes. story, people. That is like a key component, I think, to being a whole human being is know who you are. I'm the witchy Middle Eastern boy looking girl. Mm-hmm. And I'm down for it. Let's go. You know what? I'm big mommy muscles are coming in the moment I get an approval for my doctor's bitch. And I'm gonna choke everybody out. Like that's gonna be. I want to play into the aesthetic, but also, like I said, somehow when I do, I just feel better because I think it starts to come together. Like who am I to sit here and be like, I wish I had a petite nose. I yeah. wish I had no bump. Like okay, okay, but that's not what happened. Okay, so let's play into it. Plus, I do think I hate to say this. I know I see myself as like average but distinct enough and my body's pretty killer that I see myself as attractive enough to not complain about it now in my 30s but that Mm. insecurity of my teens feeling so loudly pressured by the bubbles it still lives inside of me in a very quiet way but I will say overall aging has been the best thing for my insecurities yeah yeah. I yeah. on the insecurity discussion again, like it's really difficult for me to relate for some reason because mm. I did get comments from the bubbles and even from my own, you know, family, like you're not as yeah. pretty, you have like this shaped legs compared to like, you know, what I prefer, like what are ideally shaped legs. Like I have knock my knees are I have knock knees, like a slight like oh, knock yeah. knee. Um and so which is super common, but like it is what it is. You know, it's not the ideal leg shape mm. uh, for a lot of people. And um, also in school, I've been, uh, people would call me a witch. Um, people would say, ew, because my, because I had a little back hair on my yeah. lower back. And, yeah. you know, like, um, and I had a unibrow. But I never seemed, I never gave a fuck. I don't remember giving a fuck mm. for some reason. It was really interesting. Um, I, I like leaned into the witch thing ever, like when I was in middle school, um, and I wonder what the distinction yeah. is. Like, what is what is it in someone's personality? Um, because, yeah, what is it in someone's personality that causes them to develop insecurities? Because I don't know if it's existence necessarily. Because again, I have an experience where existence and people outside of me were telling me these things that they didn't like about me. 
um, Do you very have a high opinion of yourself? Um, I think I have a matter of fact opinion of myself, if that mm, makes don't sense. Don't we all though? Because I know for a fact yeah. I'm really critical on myself, mm-hmm. but I also do things even if I'm insecure about them. So even though people were calling me ugly, I just kept moving forward and doing my thing. So I will say like people think I'm like you, but I'm not. I'm just doing it even though I'm mm. insecure. Because mm. I feel that insecurity that I could be making a mistake or I could be being untrue to myself or I could be maybe that's the borderline growing up where I'm like, is this me? Is this my aesthetic? Is this my aesthetic? Is this who I am? Because even now, especially as a YouTuber, I get told every day who I'm supposed mm-hmm. to be. So I'm always like, yeah, no, I know who I am. And that person is just like a lot of things. But I don't – yeah, I don't think it's a big deal that I do have the insecurities because I think everyone mm-hmm. has an insecurity if they – have a fear of a consequence. Like you said earlier, if you're not as mm-hmm. aesthetically pleasing, that could be a huge consequence yeah. to your bubble. So I'm yeah. internally, and maybe I'm hearing that maybe there were little consequences for you existing, maybe? Maybe, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I think it was more like the people who were saying these things to me, I didn't really care about socializing with fair. anyway. So fair. like I, I wasn't trying to please them really. Uh, that's um, fair, yeah. So have yeah, you, never, so you think, never dealt with like childhood rejection in a big way? Never had a group friend turn on you or anything? No, I uh, yeah. like I've always been like this. I don't really like friends that much. Like I like them, don't get me wrong, but like yeah. I'm very like, I have my inner circle, I have my family and my romantic partner and that is who I focus on I tend to focus on so like um yeah I'm very social very extroverted I love talking to people but I I'm not a people pleaser I I was actually talking with my boyfriend he was like he was like I wish you were a people pleaser because I was like am I a people pleaser he's like hell no you're not and I wish you were sometimes like, okay. Did you take the big five uh, um, Jordan Peterson test where it says like politeness? I did. Do you, know, I do you remember did. what you were for politeness? Um, I got a one. Okay, so I'm a seven. So this is, okay, this is what I think it is then. Because I'm not a people pleaser compared to everyone else in my life, but I still am a little bit. And I think that's that seven on the politeness scale. It's pretty mm. low, but it's not a one. <laughs> that's pretty distinct, girly. That's pretty distinct. Yeah. You but, have a – yeah. You have, like, a really good personality for being, like, a leader, right? I feel. Mm. Maybe? If if you say so. I'm, I'm like, I'm not, um, I don't particularly pursue that. Mm. But I don't know that I'd necessarily mind it. Yeah. But I, I don't want to pursue it. But if people elect that mm. of me or ask that of me, I'm open to it. If yeah, for sense. sure. For sure. I get like, I want, I'm happy. I don't want to get, a, I don't want to do it on purpose. I'm happy to fall into it, especially as an older sister and like yeah. a second mom. But I will say that I'm just enough of a people pleaser on that scale that I'm like, how do I make everyone happy? And then I have to choose and be like, sorry, you're going to be the unhappy ones. My bad. <laughs> but like, I will make the choice. Like I'm, I will make the choice, but I will have a hard time through it. I wonder, well, so I also wondered like to what extent, because <clears throat> I think people pathologize pretty normal things. So, like, I think there's, like, the normal level of insecurity, and then there's insecurity, like, being unable to leave the house without makeup on. Like, you know, yeah. body dysmorphic disorder, et cetera. Like, right, nobody right, can right. see me. Like, uh, there's some people who, um, or some women who will not let their partners see them without makeup. Totally. They'll, like, turn off the light, go to bed, like, take their makeup off, go to bed. Some of them will sleep in their makeup, and it, you know, becomes very dangerous. Totally. So I feel like there's that insecurity and then there's like a, I don't like this part of myself. Oh, well, like there's that also. Those are all, I think, different relationships. Mm -hmm. Same, like even with that, like talking about like, do I feel beautiful? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be real with you. I do feel beautiful. (laughs) Do I feel like a 10? No. Mm Mm-hmm. I, those are so different too. Like I definitely have moments where I'm like looking in the mirror. I'm like, this could be a selfie day. I'm feeling cute. Yes, it's a selfie day. Yes. Yes. Oh, so I, I will say I always feel beautiful based off my brain what a beauty is. Mm-hmm. Like I always feel like good enough. Yeah. But I don't always feel Instagram worthy. <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. A hundred percent. Like <laughs> that's and that's what I say when I, I when I say that I don't struggle with insecurity. I mean, I'm not considering plastic surgery like in no. any real way. Mm-hmm. I'm not. Um, mm-hmm. I don't care if somebody sees me in some PJs Ooh. and, you know, and whatever. So that's what I mean. I don't mean that there's things that there's things about myself that I don't dislike or that mm-hmm. I'm like, eh, this could be different. There are. But I don't think that's, I don't think that to me, like, there's like a, 
there's like a threshold for me where totally. I would kind of count it as an insecurity that I, I don't think I necessarily embody, but maybe we're just using words differently. But I know, I think I agree with that concept because, mm-hmm. um, okay, so the other day my partner was playing with my turkey flap <laughs> and he was like, he touched it and he pulled it forward for me to kiss him. And I was like, no. And I looked at him, I was like, we are, we are like having a real relationship moment right now. And he was like, how is that? I was like, honestly, it's too funny, but it's not sexy, but it's so funny. Mm-hmm. And so he kept doing it as a joke. I was like, wait, I have to send this to my girlfriend because she's always talking about get her getting hers like, re- like surgically like changed. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I got to send this to her. So I sent it to her and she's like, I hate everything about that. And I was like... <laughs> Like, but for me, I'm too much of a boy not to find it funny. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I told him this. And this is something we discussed in our relationship. Uh, how, like, this is going to sound really, I feel beautiful, but I don't always feel like a girl. And when I'm, like, in sensual sexy mode, mm-hmm. if we're being very, like, we are trying to be, like, turning on each other and mm-hmm. you touch my turkey flap. Now <laughs> this is a joke and we are not having sex and we're going to laugh and I'm going to give you a noogie like because now yeah. we're turning it into playful mode. So I will say there's something to be said about I always feel beautiful. He always reinforces that I'm beautiful. He's like into my eyes. I appreciate my hazel eyes getting some love because, you know, <laughs> I appreciate all of that. But if yeah, if he goes into joking mode, then I'm thinking less about being beautiful, more about being funny. Mm-hmm. So I think there's something to be said about how comfortable you are. Like, I love it when he points out all of my wrinkles and he's like, oh, my God, you are in your 30s. I was like, because <laughs> like I, I am. I really see my face aging. I'm starting to sag here like my mom. And I'm like, oh, here it is, that extra skin that's starting to show. And for me, of course, I'm just grateful that I'm aging because it means I haven't killed myself yet. <laughs> but mm-hmm. also, it's nice to have somebody who can talk about it because, yeah, I'm, I'm going to age. I'm going to get old. My boobs are going to sag. My butt's going to sag. And I hope he doesn't divorce me because I'm not beautiful anymore. But because him and I see beauty in the same way, you can't age out of beauty. Yeah, I think I think th- so. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie and say I only use beauty in the beep bop way, right? Because there's a beauty in... There's like a beauty in a sunset, you know, there's a beauty in relationships and love and, you know, and the the consciousness of the person. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So, yeah. So I think there's like the beep bop beauty, which like to me is like 20 percent important Mm. personally, Mm -hmm. you know, and then there's the beauty of of effort. Yes. Of effort of of finding um somebody who you can communicate with easily, a beauty and ease of the relationship. Like I'm not saying that relationships aren't work, but relationships yes. shouldn't be w- like war or like you two against each other, right? Yeah. So there's like an ease in communication, um sharing values and stuff, and that's all beautiful. Um and it, you find that person beautiful because of all the effort yeah so yeah yeah I think and and I think like sometimes people overly value that beep bop beauty and they like forget about all that other stuff do you think people confuse the differences between like look there are humans who are genetically what I see them I'm like you are gorgeous beautiful sexy fucking a I am I will worship you mommy like what is happening yeah like Anne Hathaway like oh like gorgeous gorgeous. like shave her head put her in like a potato sack she's beautiful like, it doesn't gorgeous. matter what you do to her. She is gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. And then there are some people like me who, like, effort really counts. <laughs> mm-hmm. Doing yeah. my hair really counts. Like, I noticed that if I go to the store looking like this, mm-hmm. I get treated differently than when I'm like this. <laughs> and I think because this looks like I did my bang somehow. But if I'm mm-hmm. like this, they're just like, oh, she's like, uh, okay, like, what is going on? <laughs> it's like, it's different. So but I no, will- but I mean, like, that you kind of look like, um... You kind of look like my family too. Just like ah! here I am. Like where, like if you put like a little, especially if you put a little head headdress on. Like I'm just yeah. going to church. Like that's that's. The I'm vibe. telling you, <laughs> there's something. So I guess the question I really want to hone in on as we're coming to the end of this mm-hmm. time together is when we talk about beauty standards. We know I think I think humans know mm-hmm. kind of like you know what a man or a woman is when you see them because yeah. we look different. You know what a beautiful person is when you see them and when you don't. Yep. But I also think beauty is a part of that effort so our brains confuse the two Mm -hmm. because when I see an old person with a ton of wrinkles and hard work on their hands I'm like how beautiful is that because you're thinking of the everything that went into it yeah but how do you like 
especially as like we, you know, if we have kids and we start telling our kids like what is beauty, how do we mm-hmm. really explain it without all the connotations or negative connotations that come with if I'm not that thing? Yeah, I think I wonder if there's like a worth in finding a different word. Like some people, mm-hmm. like for me, some people use attractiveness to mean the beep bop beauty. Oh. But for me, I I think attractiveness is that beep bop beauty plus effort. Mm, interesting. I, and I think I think just saying beep bop beauty for me works mm-hmm. too. Like really, like after I've defined the beep bop beauty. Yeah. Um, and I think like telling my kids like, yeah, it is what it is. You see how this ball is blue and this ball is red. Yeah. And they're both fine and it's cool. Okay. And so this person has that beep bop beauty and this person does it. But guess what? The person who does it, um, they are working hard. Mm. They are taking care of themselves. They're conscientious about their health. They are, um, they are loving towards their family or their friends. Yeah. They are a good community member. And look how much worth that is compared to somebody who maybe has all the beep bop beauty in the world, but is bitter, um, doesn't take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. um does is misanthropic in some ways you know and all these things um that for me personally I don't super appreciate you know and like I said at the beginning I'll take I'll take an average beep bop person yeah who shares my values who um who puts an effort over a 10 out of 10 that does none of that any day life is too life is too meaningless and too serious for Mm -hmm. me not to pick a person that is going to be all around cohesive with my existence and existing. Oh my God. Are you still here? No. I lost you again. You're still here, girly. Oh my gosh. I am so sorry. Of course it had to happen again towards the end. (laughs) No problemo. Absolutely. You were there the whole time. So I was just watching you figure it out. (laughs) That was even funnier. No problem. So, okay, wait, uh, aesthetic, pleasing. Okay. I do think it's more important for mm-hmm. people to choose people that are going to bring us our joy and looks yes. only matter. I think because we care about effort because it says so much about you, but your genetic, yes. whatever you were given, um, yes. I think is less important, but I think it's what you do with what you're given. That tells me so much more about you. Exactly. Exactly. A hundred percent. What, yeah. what, what I was saying. It's like, yeah, if, if you are someone who knows who they are and operates from that, from that point, somebody out there is going to find you attractive. A hundred percent. Yes. Because and look, it's, it's hot. The irony of the disadvantages, if you're a person who, like me, is very specific, you have less people to interact with, more chance to find your person. Yeah. So advantage in that way. Disadvantage And you don't have ways. to wonder. You don't have to wonder, oh, do they wonder. only love me because I'm a supermodel? You don't have to wonder, oh, Literally. do they only love me for because I have, exactly. like, I don't know, because I exactly. am a 10. Like, because I believe I'm compatible with, like, a million people on this whole planet, it's like... I really believe that. Maybe I'm being too much of a romantic, but I really believe there are people that are more than capable, like compatible with me. My partner and I finding each other, like that's great. That means we're going to build off of this. Like our consciousness, like who we are as people are going to build into this relationship and we're going to reinforce that in our kids. Like I actually, my mom used to say this to me, but I think I'm going to say it a little bit more modern to my kids. Look, you're red and they're blue. And right now society likes blue kids, but you're a red kid. So you just need to wait a second and 10 years you'll be like popular and in. But the point is, if you're going to be a trend kid and you're only going to be valued for your trending, that you're not really being valued. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's the same with like trying to keep up with those displays of wealth. Like for no. most people, why? So it's not, it's not so worth stressful. it. It's not worth and it. And look it's... what the Kardashians had to do, by the way. I'm sick of people mm-hmm. saying I'm mad at the Kardashians for being famous. You could have done it. You could have chased paparazzi, gotten butt implants, changed your aesthetic, spent a bunch of money until you had it. But why? You know they're not joyful in the same way. You know that they're going to spend their one limited time on earth worrying about what their lines look like on their face while the rest of us are eating barbecue with our families. Like, why? Like, and I want the joy for them. Maybe they are having it. Maybe it's their bubble. Maybe I'm being Mm -hmm. judgy. But I really feel like people who stress too much about how they look without really owning what they look like, there's Mm -hmm. a disconnect in joy there. There's just a disconnect in joy. Exactly. Yes. I think think people like – with insecure there's like d- delusion in in two directions like people yeah. saying i'm a 10 out of 10 or i'm a seven and like everybody's saying they're a seven for some reason or delusion the other way of like i'm a two i'm a three it's just yeah. like, sure maybe but now what <laughs> now what that's the point so for me i think the journey is so important you it's okay to feel like you're not 
up to standard, but recreate the standard so you know that it's about you and not what the bubbles are telling you. Because yes. the bubbles, God bless them, are trying their best, but they're also stressed. And they're also not exactly happy with the stresses they've put on themselves. Getting the right shoes, getting the right hair, getting the right – sometimes you are just good enough. Yes. Yeah, you really are. Is there anything else you want to say to the audience, to the internet? Any other thoughts on your noggin today? Um, I, I mean, to, to the audience, I just want to say, like, if you are, you know, feeling at a place where you are really insecure with what you look like, I just want you to remember, you know, mind your business, water your own grass. And that is the path to joy, like water your own grass. And by that, I mean, look at yourself honestly yeah. and find the things that work for you and your aesthetic. And I, I mean, I, I promise it'll it'll be better. It will be better. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. I will link your socials down below. Yes? Yes. Okay. Go follow her, everybody. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you Thank very you. soon. Really. Bye. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm bed, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool dun, 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 dun.